Apple dropped the latest update to their iPhone operating system. And it has all sorts of new features. You know, you can now use the phone with a video game controller. You can design your own app icons. And there are four new voice options for Siri, including two black voices, which means millions of people are about to have their first black friends. So exciting. But the big update that everyone's talking about has to do with privacy. And it's the subject of our latest episode of If You Don't Know, Now You Know. What is one of the biggest concerns people have about modern technology? Privacy, right? Because our phones know everything about us. What music we listen to, how much sleep we get, what our face looks like when we're pooping. But now, Apple is going to give you a little more control over how widely that information is shared. You know how it goes. You search for something online, then see an ad on Facebook or Instagram for that exact item. Well, Apple is making it harder for apps to track your online activity. When you're using apps on your iPhone, you may start to see this. Apple users must now give permission for apps to track your online activity data. Before, you could only opt out. It's about time. Jenny Gephardt is with the privacy nonprofit, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Switching from opt out to opt in is huge. That is what's going to really make a lot more users opt out of this tracking feature that wasn't built for users, it was built for advertisers. That's right, people. With the new iOS update, you have to opt in to being tracked online instead of having to opt out. And I know it might seem like a small change, but this is a huge deal because people are lazy as shit. Like, think about it. If Apple said that they were gonna put all your nudes online unless you opted out, you'd probably be like, what? No ways, Whoa, where's that opt out option? Ah, uh, settings, general, uh, where? Uh, you know what, I'm proud of my third nipple. Let's just do this. I don't care anymore. I got things to do. And people don't understand how much information Facebook is actually getting from your other apps. Like, you think it's a small thing. You know how you always like to your friends, oh, I was talking about something and then it popped up. Is my phone listening to me? No, it's the apps. Like, if you're in Atlanta and you check the weather in Vermont, it won't wait for you to search for a winter coat before it starts showing you ads for one. And if you've been ordering pizza every night on Grubhub, well, then the ads will show you a coat that's two sizes up because it knows. So this new privacy feature is good news for iPhone users, but it turns out it's very bad news for one of Apple's biggest rivals, Facebook. In fact, it's so bad for them that they've started throwing up pop-ups begging everyone to let them keep tracking us and warning us that if we don't, Facebook might stop being free of charge. And I'm not gonna lie, people, that seems like an empty threat to me because who would pay to be on Facebook with the type of people willing to pay to be on Facebook? I mean, that's like if a crack house had a cover charge. I actually wouldn't mind if Facebook started charging people because I think if they did, maybe people would actually think for a second before they posted. The government puts fluoride in the water to brainwash us, post. Two dollars? I'll keep it to myself. Now, the reason Facebook needs to track its users is so that it can charge big bucks to advertisers who want to target very specific audiences. But Mark Zuckerberg knows that people don't care if he can't afford to give his hovercraft a Lamborghini for its birthday. So instead, he's asking you to think about the poor companies that'll suffer if he can't track you. Facebook said Apple's move will harm their small business advertisers. It's gonna kill us, it's gonna kill us. But for Monique wilson Debriano, who was featured in a Facebook campaign and owns Charleston Gourmet Burger, the change has already affected sales and she's had to cut costs. It's not about, you know, small businesses, you know, wanting to take away anyone's privacy. All we wanna do is really just service our customers better. So if someone loves hamburgers and they're looking for something that is just awesome, you know, to make their hamburgers taste better, I would like to show my ad to you. And this update takes that away from small businesses like mine. Okay, now this is interesting. I mean, I don't like getting tracked, but it is true that it does help some small businesses target their ads, you know? And the truth is in life, bad things can have good side effects. You know, it's like how serial killers are bad. We all agree that they're bad, but you do get a lot of really interesting podcasts out of them. Yeah? 
No. So I can't see what Facebook is trying to argue here. They're saying, do you really want to hurt small businesses before Amazon has a chance to bankrupt them? And honestly, I wouldn't mind targeted ads that much, but the thing is, it's how. It is how Facebook tracks all of us that I don't like. Like, it would be one thing if Facebook asked me, hey, Trevor, do you like hamburgers? Ah, we're gonna show you stuff about food. But what Facebook actually does is basically just send some guy named Gary to just stalk my entire life. Hey, Trevor, I heard you like hamburgers. What? How did you know that? <laughs> I read an email you sent to your girlfriend. <laughs> so maybe you're still not swayed by the effect of this change on small businesses. And that's why Facebook is also warning of the bleak future that awaits all of us if they can't track our every movement anymore. Facebook's pushing back. It relies on that data to target consumers with relevant ads. So if people do opt out, here's what Facebook says could happen. Say a young man is looking for a new pair of sneakers on his phone. Facebook claims that with Apple's new rules, it won't be able to use his search history and information about what other apps he uses to show him ads for things he wants to buy. So on Facebook or Instagram, he could end up seeing ads for women's clothing or furniture. Really? <laughs> this is a real argument? Come on, man, get the f out of here, guys. We've lived our entire lives watching untargeted ads, right? TV ads, newspaper ads, billboards, none of those were targeted, and we were fine, right? Now, all of a sudden, they're making it seem like we can't live without them. Like, we're gonna be like, oh, no. Oh, no, I'll have to watch untargeted ads, but how will I know if a product isn't for me? What if I buy tampons because I didn't know that I don't have a period? What if I buy dog food, but I don't have a dog? Am I a dog? Am I dog on tampon? I don't know. We can handle untargeted ads. In fact, sometimes untargeted ads introduce you to things that you never knew you needed. Yeah, like a shower seat. I didn't think about that before I came to America. And then now that I'm here, I realize just because I'm not 80 doesn't mean I can't get clean and comfortable. And you know, on top of all that, Facebook makes it seem, they make it seem like all they use that data for is to sell us the products that we want. But don't forget that the reason you often only see posts that make you mad as hell is because of all the time Facebook is tracking you and they use that targeting to piss you off. It's not a coincidence that Facebook is always telling you that Joe Biden is gonna make the Bible Spanish only, or that Trump stole all the mailboxes to give to Kim Jong-un. It's because they know how to keep you engaged for as long as possible, and they know this by tracking you. And again, I'm not pro-Apple here, right? But Apple didn't build their entire business model on stalking you, Facebook did. And if moving society away from tracking people means that Gary has to find a new job, then you know what? So be it. But then, Trev, who will recommend creams for your toenail fungus? Get the f out of here, Gary.